Hello Fetakomo Tubatsi EHPs. Welcome to a quick start guide on how to use the NL52. We'll go into a lot more detail in further videos, but this one is just really to get you going and also to check your instrument when you receive it. So basically the NL52, when you receive it, it's going to have a windshield on it, which you can remove by unscrewing it and just unscrewing the windshield. It's a little rubber device there. This is a fall off prevention device for the windshield so that your windshield doesn't just fall off and that's your microphone this is the part you really need to protect carefully the replacement cost of that is about 14,000 rand that's your pre-amplifier and then obviously the sound level meter itself so we're going to show you how to do a couple of things now one of the things we have here is we have a memory card which you're going to install inside the in the instrument there's this little place where you press to pop it open and uh, this seems to be tricky okay once you have the card you open the flap at the bottom here and you place your SD card facing this way with a little arrow showing up and you place that inside the slot and then you press gently it should go in to remove that same card you do that then it pops out so it's just a little draw action right now the cards in we're going to get back to the card in a moment at this stage let's put in some batteries so we need four pen light batteries just always make sure that you use fresh batteries and that they aren't a mix of used and new batteries that's very very important when you mix new and used batteries together you get an effect where the discharge batteries get charged up by the reverse charged by the new batteries and that can actually lead to a cell exploding and leaking inside the instrument very costly uh, exercise if that happens right so you now have the instrument with batteries in you want to turn on you have to hold the power down power switch down for two seconds at least and then it starts up the reason for that is it's a feature that if the instrument were for example running and doing a measurement you could not just switch off by accidentally touching there you would actually have to hold it down for a while and it would caution you that it's turning down off right there we go so um, now that we got past that point the next thing you want to do when you've received the instrument it's just to do a calibration check or calibration adjustment depending what the reading is so in order to do that you have to do a few checks first so first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your um, display level is at least 100 decibels because the output of the calibrate is 94 db so if the range isn't set correctly you need to make that adjustment it probably will be set correctly because I'm going to leave it like this for you the next thing you want to do is you want to go to um, I'm just quickly going to system menu to have a look at the backlighting because that seems a bit dim at the moment so I'm going to increase the brightness there we go and yeah that's a bit brighter now so um, first thing you want to do before you start the calibration is you want to go to and I went a little fast there you want to go to the measure menu so again to get to those menus just press the green button you get to these nine uh, buttons uh, soft keys select the one that says measure which will probably always be the default one scroll down to windscreen correction and here you want to make sure you select and you want to make sure that you're on WS none if you're on WS10, you would get that little image, but WS9 is what you want. Press this key here to escape and to get back to your original screen. Now you're ready to do a calibration. So you press, You of course, at this stage you need your calibrator. So let's quickly get the calibrator going. It needs a cover to be removed, where you just press on the sides. You put in two pen light -like batteries and you place your cover back on again. This has to be placed over the microphone before it's switched on, so do not switch it on until it's on the microphone and do not do what I'm doing now, rotate it. 
you merely want to slide it in and out gently. Once it's in, you can then press the power button, but you should not press the power button on this if it's not connected to a microphone because there's an automatic atmospheric correction um, device in it that tries to correct for the atmospheric pressure changes and if you do it without a microphone it does confuse the instrument temporarily. Right, we'll note that we're supposed to get a reading of 94 dB on the screen here and we only get a reading of, well we get an over reading, so 95.4. The calibrate is a reference source of 94 so we know that we need to make an adjustment. To make an adjustment we press the cull button over here and we make sure that it says acoustic calibrator. If, for example, it says internal calibration, which it does now, you use this display button over here to toggle and you will then get the acoustic calibration. We now adjust the acoustic calibration because that's what we have connected over here. We have an acoustic calibrator. So we adjust it and we will adjust it down to 94.0. It should do this in a place that's not too noisy. Background noise can have a little bit of effect. So, doing very small adjustments. There we go. So now we're fine. You can press the cull button to get out of the cull mode. We're back in a normal sound level meter mode. And we see now that we have 94.0. If you were doing... Uh, daily checks you don't need to do this color adjustment you merely have to place the calibrator on when you get to your site to do measurements place it on turn the calibrator on and ensure that you get 94 db 93.9 is also acceptable it normally takes a little while to settle do not try and make adjustments for for fractions of a decibel on a daily basis it's absolutely normal if it's anything between 93.7 and 94.2.3 you don't need to adjust it it's just a daily fluctuation only make adjustments when you have like half a decibel or more uh, and that's basically it you have a little battery level checker over here batteries should last about 24 hours um, of continuous use Obviously, it's segmented. It's got three, two, one bar. Um, over here, it's just telling you what kind of storage we've got at the moment, which is auto store. We've got 100% capacity on a um, on a uh, uh, card. That's on the SD card that's in there. So let's show you quickly how you would do um, a measurement in the field. So let's remove the calibrator. We have preset this particular instrument for you. It's set to do an auto store of one hour and it will do an LEQ every 10 minutes. So we press start. You of course can make these changes. Just read the manual that will explain how to do that or we'll explain later in more detail. So you press start. It'll ask you if you want to overwrite on existing files or not, and obviously you need to read that carefully. And now the auto store is in action. So basically there'll be a 10 minute LEQ reading token, and then obviously the minimum, the maximum, the percentiles, the uh, various parameters will be stored for that 10 minute period. It'll continue to do that for a one hour. If you prefer not to do it this way, you could go to um, store mode over here, go to store, instead of choosing auto, you select and you choose manual, and then you don't worry about the store name, you choose the measurement time 10 minutes, and now you're fine, so when you go to manual, you'll have a 10 minute period. And you also want to make sure a few other things are set correctly. In, you want to have your main channel on A weighting. You want to have it on fast. You want to have the windscreen set to WS10 because we changed it uh, when we calibrated. 
you'd like your sub channel settings on you want that also on a weighting because that's what we use and you want uh, additional settings set to um, additional settings set to impulse and additional process scrolling through there too quickly to LEQ so now we'll have two displays we'll have the impulse display on the sub channel and the normal instantaneous values on the main channel so if we press run now we'll have it cancel that sorry I'm just running it for a few seconds stop and we will see that we have LEQ, LAE, LMAX, and LMAN, and LAI, which is the impulse LEQ. So we get a whole range of um, data set for that particular reading. Obviously, I didn't run it for 10 minutes. You would run it for 10 minutes, and it would then um, stop. I'm going to just say save data, just for the sake of starting this again. It'll tell you where to save the data. So now we can just press start again and just to demonstrate how that looks if you want to toggle between displays there's your main display and by pressing the display button we're basically scrolling through various screens again this is all very quick just to show you a few things on the instrument i hope i've covered enough if you have more questions at this stage they'll probably be answered in in uh, upcoming videos but please give me a call and i will try and assist over the phone basically that's it from a sound level meter point of view and we're quickly going to show you how to connect up the tripod so that's coming up in a little short video after this thank you